first half, we could have easily um, folded up our tents and um, not competed better in the second half. And the second half showed us what we've got to start to learn about games. All right? We're too much of a one-half team right now. And uh, it, it, that inconsistency is killing us. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's in our practices. It's in our practices. We have a practice Thursday night that's tremendous. Um, we shifted everything back a little bit after my situation with my mom, and we, we came back at night. And uh, we turned back around yesterday, and it's not even close to that level. We, until we get to um, any type of competitive consistency, we're going to have these type of situations. And, it, and, it, and it's, it's, uh, it's not discouraging, but it's disappointing because we're better than that. And uh, uh, the second half, we were playing with uh, not only great energy, but the freedom that we were trying to play with in the first half, which we made it harder than it had to be. We're trying to attack their pressure and not practicing and, and or not carrying out what we tried to practice with to get the ball advanced the way we wanted to do it midcourt, not have it sit at midcourt, get it to the corners, get it driven out, to cut off the slots and wings because of the way people load up the elbows defensively on us so much right now, daring us to shoot it because they know we don't have a downhill driving team. We don't have guys that can just go get baskets. Um, there's a lot of guys in this league that can go do that. We're not that team. So we have to keep manufacturing ways to get, get our movement, get our shots, and, it's, and, and it can't just be ball screen, even though we got more of those. But the first half, there's too much. We're, we're just not attacking. Second half, we're attacking and we take the lead. And uh, we look like two different teams. It's got to look like that the same too. It's my responsibility. We got to keep finding a way to get more consistent play. Uh, whether it's the Vanderbilt game, we, we, we hang in there in the first half, boom, we break it open in the second half. Kentucky game, we're right there in the first half. We don't come out. And, and, and it's not that we're trying to break away. We don't keep attacking. There's just not a level of competitive consistency, like I said at the beginning. But Florida is a really good team. I think both teams played really desperate in the first or second half. They played a little more desperate in the first half than us. Their pressure, there was we had no intent of having their pressure get us back on our heels, but it did because there's there's two ways to attack the press. You either attack it and you try to score, or you break it. And and in my estimation, they'd much rather have you break it, all right, than be dealing with a shortage of time on the shot clock, and then that plays right into their hands. We had no intention of doing that, and and. Um, and it always helps when you make when you uh, when you get stops so that they can't get into their press. But the first half, um, we let that get us back on our heels. And um, again, that's because we just don't have enough attack downhill guys that can just break through that type of pressure. So we got to keep manufacturing ways to do it. But um, we loved our crowd. It was as loud as it's been, especially when Mike had to call timeout and then when we took the lead, the crowd was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. We had a ton of recruits here today, just an example of what this place can become for us. So um, I'm, I'm uh, angry about it because I think these guys are better than that. Um, I want them to get a little angrier about it, and I want them to see that they're better than that. And we've got to start learning. that you, it, it's, it's hard. I don't know if we're going to play a 40-minute game anytime soon, but we've got to be playing more than 20 and 25, and we've got to learn how to do that. But I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning and try to take some bright side out of this. We could have folded it up at the start of that second half, and we didn't. And um, hopefully they learned something. I'm just getting tired of learning these lessons of, of these guys under them learning lessons that they're better than, than what they think and better than what they play. And if we stay true to a game plan, if we stay true to the movement, if we, if we become more and more physical uh, on the glass, if we stay true to what we need to do defending the ball, if we could ever get tougher on the ball, Mike, you got me on a count here because I know I'm going way too long right here. All right. If we could ever get tougher on the ball, uh, we'd be that much better. But I know you got questions, so I'll, I'll wait. Coach, obviously, our condolences uh, for everything. Uh, first Thank off, you. how is your family doing? And uh, you know, how challenging of a week was it all around? Yeah, I'm not, it, it, it's, it's hard. I mean, and you can imagine, and, and I hope. If you've never had to go through it, I hope you don't. Um, um, it, it just, it, it, it's, it, it, there's, there's no way to put it into words. It just isn't. So, um, just doing our best and trying to do the best for my family and, and uh, keep myself as uh, locked in and, and uh, as it can possibly be and go from there.
like you said, a whole new team came out of the locker room after the half. Mm -hmm. Was there somebody on the team who said something? Was there something that you said to get them back in the right mindset? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't negative. You know, we, 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 we needed to reaffirm what we wanted to do against the pressure, and we needed to move some people. The, the way we were attacking in practice with some guys was not the way we were attacking in the game. And so we needed to move some people around adjustment-wise that way. Um, but really, we just tried to simplify. I mean, pass and cut, right? I mean, it's you're in the slot. You don't have the ball cut. If the ball's coming at you, cut. If you make the pass to the corner, cut, right? And, and just keep the game moving and, and, and have the ball find energy, not sit there and wait for the ball. And we did a much better job of that. And we were much more aggressive defensively on the ball. But our deflections... Um, I'm, I, I should just quit keeping it. I've never, I've never coached a team that gets fewer deflections, gets, gets less hands on the ball. And, and uh, when we did, we had, some, we had some good ones in the start of that second half. We've got to be more active. And um, um, some of the things we can't control right now, maybe we can't control that we can't get downhill without a ball screen. Maybe we don't have guys that can just go get a shot like a Kevon Allen can and guys like that. Maybe we don't have that. But we can control how tough we are on that ball. We can control how aggressive we are on that ball. We can control if we get our hands up on the basketball. And we can control better and better if we're taking that first dribble with a bigger step. And, and that's some of the stuff that hurts. And when we made our run and when we, uh, we kept doing a lot of the same things, but then we tried to have a few home run plays and instead of keeping it as simple as it needed to be. Because what was working uh, in the second half could have continued to work. We just make the simple play, just hit the open man. And really, at the end of the day, the more complicated basketball gets, the simpler it needs to be. Hit the open man, cut and move without the ball. The shot goes up on the board, go get it. Right? And, and that's really what it comes down to. And we did a good job of that for a while, and we didn't do as good a job of it as lately. Tony, you guys have 49 points. You have a uh, 52 today. Uh, you know, Rayshon doesn't give you anything offensively, gets in foul trouble. Um, is it a lack of downhill guy, or, or what's going on offensively? Um, Here's the thing, I say this to the team, when you want to score, I say this on the radio show too, when you go into the game and you want to score, you rarely do, right? When you go into the game and you're, you're locked into it, it's like anything else, when there's something you really want, right, you probably got to focus on something else if you're going to get it, right? So us scoring right now, look how easy it was to score at the start of the second half. Look how hard it was to score in the first half, right? Were we playing harder? Were we playing, no, we're just moving without the ball. The ball was moving better. So when the ball is finding the energy, um, there's nobody on this team that's the man, right? And, and they grew up in an environment here where there was guys that were like that, that were those guys. Well, we don't have that guy. And that's, that's got to be our strength, not become our weakness. And I'm not using this as Ray as an example. I mean, I'm using the whole team with this. When the ball is moving, okay, when you're defending, when you're on the glass hard, when you're cutting and moving without that ball, when you're getting lost in the game, but absolutely focused on what you got to do defensively and rebounding, it is amazing how much better your looks get, how many more shots you make, how many more opportunities you get. And that is our entire team. And that's one of the problems we have with, with the scoring. We're not a great three-point shooting team. We're not going to stop shooting threes, okay? But we've got to get them off movement. We've got to get them off inside out. We've got to get them off reversals. Inside out meaning we got to touch the paint, whether on a post up or a drive, get it kicked out. We've got to cut better. Right? We've got to start to bring our practice mentality to the games because really that's the kind of stuff we can control. We can control our cutting. We can't control how we're being defended. We can control our cutting. We can control how quick that ball moves. We can control our effort to the glass. We can also control our effort defensively. And that's what we need more and more guys to be locked in on if we're going to keep building. That's the way that, that's going to be the cornerstone of the program. I don't care how good a talent we have. I've coached some extremely talented players. They were also incredibly good teammates because of all the other things that they did that didn't involve scoring. And it was amazing how good of scores they were because they did all those other things. And we've got to continue to learn that. Coach, I was going to ask you about Rayshon Hammond's foul troubles early and if that's, mm -hmm. if that's what's complicating him in some of the games where he's struggling. Yeah, he's not always charging. People are just lining up for it because he's trying to drive on it into a guy's chest. No practice at. I mean, it, it's he, – he's uh, – um, is the ratio on you see now the ratio on you're going to see down the road with the quickness and speed? No, it can't be. It can't be. He, and I tell him that all the time. There's not going to be a future in this game if he doesn't get lower and quicker and more explosive with the ball. All right, that's a part of it. 
But sometimes right now he makes the read and people are just lining up for the charge he's, because he's going to go right into their chest. And, and he's not low enough when he makes the move. And so we, I've, got to, I've got to really spend some time trying to be creative and how we're or looking for creative ways to get him the ball in better spots right now because we need him to score now. I mean, it, it's him not scoring and us not scoring, are, they're, they're, they're together, all right? They're not together. But, I mean, in the second half, um, I didn't bat my eyes twice on changing the lineup on what we needed to do. We had some good recommendations from the coaches about going smaller and – uh, T.J. Sane had the idea with Turtle, and, and um, we decided to go with the touring in there. And, and uh, I'll take a good idea from anybody. You know, my son Riley said, "What well, we haven't run in the Indy 31. Uh, he's right. You know, all of a sudden, he's sitting behind the bench. We start getting actions out of that because, because we're getting downhill on the ball screen. So it, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look around and see what we can do that we can help him. I talk to him a lot, not down on him at all. I want him to continue to learn. I want him to understand that he's a lot more than a guy that he shoots and scores. That's what I want him to understand. Coach, you only you started the second half four for four on three pointers, and then the first half you really struggled with that. Have y'all been practicing them a lot? Who I said? Yeah, we've been practicing a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's that's part of the something we do all the time, and you have to live with it sometimes when they're not when they're not going as long as you're getting good shots. You you is this your first time? Okay, yeah, we, we, we're going to shoot threes, and so that's, we spend a lot of time, if there's anything we're going to do in practice, more than anything else, above all else, we're going to make sure we're shooting the ball. I want them to have confidence shooting the ball, but the part that I said early about how the ball was moving in the second half created those looks. We were getting cuts, which were creating open. See, when you cut, here's the thing. Make, make sure I'm, I'm explaining this, why the cut is so important. When you cut, okay, if one guy tries to play that cut and it's a hard cut, you got a pretty good chance to get a layup out of that because you got the advantage because you made the cut. What you want is two people to have to react to the cut, okay? Your man and the next guy's man, so that frees up some space for the next shooter to come up. That's what we were getting more of in the second half that we weren't getting as much of in the first half. So that's where the cutting and the movement, my cut might create a three for you, right? Your cut might create a three for me because a couple people have to react to that cut. That's why it's so important in the game of basketball, and that's what we're trying to get to. But we're not going to stop shooting the ball. We're going to work on that all the time. Florida scored half their, almost half their points. Uh, what now? Florida scored almost half their points off of the all turnovers, uh, 28 points. So um, what is the source of that? Is it a lack of focus? Like, you know, turnovers have been an issue all season. Is it the lack of focus and, or what? It's lack of being strong with the ball. It's lack of pure decision making. Um, it's lack of guys that can get their own shot. It's guys that try to make plays that aren't there. And the biggest one is what I said at the beginning, we're not strong enough with the ball. And we've got to continue to be that. We're not tough enough on the ball defensively. We're not strong enough with the ball offensively. And before anybody thinks I'm great, we work on it every day. Obviously, we're not getting it done to be the way it needs to be. But that's, that's what it is, trying to make plays that aren't there. We do not have a lot of natural decision makers. But when we get back to practice, we're going to keep working on making better at decision makers. I'm not down on these guys at all. This is what we have, and this is what we're going to work with on a daily basis. But there's no question that the turnovers are a killer. Because, because but, but here's the thing. If we're not getting movement, we wouldn't be scoring 50 points, right? We've got to get some movement. There's going to be some turnovers in the <coughs> offense. It can't be turnovers because we're trying to make plays that aren't there. Um, Coach, you only scored four points in the last nine and a half minutes or so. You know, what causes, I guess, just a long extended drought like that, and how maddening is it when you know, two minutes before you're yeah, I, I'm gonna, I gotta watch the film. I mean, you guys are better on the stats right now than me. I haven't, I haven't looked that that part into it. We had a couple turnovers. We missed some looks. Um, I'm a little. We, we gave up a couple tough looks defensively. So um, we, we weren't cutting as well in the second half. And then, and then we had a couple of turnovers to try to throw it into the post. Uh, we had a couple of turnovers out of timeouts. You know, with set actions to try to get it to a certain place. We turned it over. Those kind of things played into it. Anybody else? Do you? Uh yeah, I think it's about 14 guys. So do you, would you ideally like to have 9, nine or 10 in a rotation? Or I just want to win. I, I, I don't have a rotation right now. I, I, I wish I did. I, I want um, – um, there's times we're searching, Mark. I mean, there's times we're searching for combinations out there. With times we're searching for – sometimes it's going to be a deeper team. Sometimes, like in the second half, it's going to be a shorter bench team. Um, would I like to have a shorter bench? Absolutely. I'd like to have more consistency, though. But until we get real consistency, and you can say, well, if you have a shorter bench, you get more consistency. We're not getting that. 
if we were getting that, I'd have a shorter bench. We're trying to search and look for those combinations, somebody that can give us that lift and, and, and bring us something. But we are, I say that we are struggling a little bit with my theory of play on demand, which means you're so locked into the game when you get your name called, especially when somebody maybe that, that, is, that hadn't been in yet. Like, you've got to be so locked into that game, really, really paying attention to what you've got to go out and do. I make a sub, I put Christian Harris in, and he fouls right away, right? I took Ty Fagan out because he didn't block out. We go right in, and he makes a foul. You know, those, those things hurt. But um, we'll be right back at it. I, I'm very, very appreciative of everybody. Uh, the way they've responded for me. Um, I'm very, very appreciative of this crowd. I'm very, very appreciative of, of the way everybody's been at the University of Georgia. And today was an example with this crowd, just like the other night with Kentucky, what we can build here. And um, we're going to keep working constantly with this group to get them to understand that, to get this. Uh, we're a long way from the culture the way it's got to be, but get the, be, be, get the uh, Get, get, get the understanding of, of how competitive you've got to be, that it's not just about your hard work, it's about a hard to play, and getting the details that go into that. We're going to continue to build on that. So I hope the fans will continue to understand it as we build through this. So thank you.